Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. Okay, uh, so I have the card in here. I'm probing the uh, clock signal. I uh, got my little battery powered scope, so might as well use it. And I uh, have scope probe on that. So let me turn on the power, see if we get a clock. And reset, examine, run. I don't see any clock at all. Interesting. Uh, let's see if we're getting any other signals here. Make sure. Oh, I don't have the <laughs> I don't have the scope probe uh, plugged into the scope. Well, that'll help. All right, let's go back to clock then. Clock. Okay, we have a clock. And it's zooming along. So, uh, this scope is uh, rated at 10, uh, 10 megahertz. Uh, I tested it, it ran to about 15 megahertz. So, we're at uh, 1 microsecond per division. And we have about uh, 1, two, divi 2 clock cycles in 1 uh, microsecond. We can do a times five on the horizontal and give us a little bit, a little bit better uh, uh, signal here, or easier to see. And let's put it on a rising edge. And so this is times five. Uh, and so instead of uh, one microsecond, it's going to be 0.2 microseconds. So we have 0 0.2, 0 0.4, about 0 0.4, 0 0.5. We have about 0 0.5 microseconds. So if we get a calculator, uh, 0 0.5 microseconds. E to the 6, 1 over, is 2 megahertz. So we're looking at a 2 megahertz clock. Um, so we should be able to use that, and we need to tie the pin of the 263 uh, to use the uh, divide by 2. So we need to pin, uh, choose pin 23 high, and that will set the divide by 2. Clock divided by two, used by an external clock, is about two megahertz, which is what we got. Um, so yeah, we'll just use uh, use the clock uh, line and run that into the chip, and it is uh, TTL levels, so we don't need to worry about uh, translation. Some of the some of the uh, clocks. I think they are not they're not on the bus but when they go to the uh 8080 they're at 12 volt levels but not on the bus everything is 5 volts on the bus. So yeah, looks good. And here's the other way you can check it. Um you know I usually hate these little Chinese volt voltmeters but this particular one the AN8001 um from I can't even pronounce it a N G, A N E N G. I don't know how, how you pronounce that. They're like a ten dollar voltmeter. These things are great. They're sp you look at the calibration of these things. They are spot on. They are really accurate. I don't know how safe they are for like high voltages and stuff, but just for around the lab bench, these things are just wonderful. So there we go. I'm going to put it into um, uh, frequency mode, and I'll probe the uh, clock pin here, and it says we have 2 megahertz. So, another way to do it. Okay, well I've done a little bit of wiring. Uh, this is uh, where the chip will go. And I basically wired up the uh, the amplifier. Figured <laughs> nothing to go wrong there, it's just an LM3386, uh, so there's tons of schematics for that. Um, so I've wired that up and uh, put a nice little connector here on the edge of the board. And that just goes off to a, uh, a speaker over here. Um, 
And so uh, I've applied uh, 8 volts to the, uh, to the regulator, so we should be getting 5 volts, uh, 5 volts out on the bus here. And uh, I've got uh, pin 1 is where the output will be, so I have that connected to a, uh, uh, to a function generator over here. There we go. And if I turn on the function generator, and I think it'll, what is that, 400, 436 hertz. I think you can hear that. And uh, I can, oops, I can adjust the volume with a, uh, a little potentiometer here. So that's working. So, uh, if the chip actually outputs sound, uh, I'll be able to hear it. And we can go back to the, uh, to the function generator and have some fun. Uh, if you have one of these, oh, come on, focus. There it goes. Uh, if you can sweep your oscillator, you can make all sorts of funny sounds. Anyway, enough of that.